Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you guys are new. I created my Real Talk series on my channel to create a casual atmosphere where I'm able to talk about the hard hitting topics as far as being a business owner and also a makeup artist. I get to be a little bit ranty on here. I'm going to be doing this in the get ready with me style video. I will be linking all the products that I use down below in the description bar. So definitely go ahead and check those out. All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is go in with the Belief Aqua Balm. This is just a lightweight gel moisturizer. I absolutely love it. And it kind of doubles as a primer too. I think a bunch of people when they're beginning with their makeup artist careers actually struggle with this really hard. And that is pretty much the issue of getting started in your career. A lot of people come to me and they're like, do you have any tips of how to begin? Or like, how do I start and launch my business? I feel like a lot of beginner artists make the mistake of comparing themselves to artists that have been in the game for way longer than they have. They see all these things that they have set up for their business. They see all the accounting stuff, the backend bookkeeping stuff, the contracts that people have in place, and also the amount of clients that they have and how good their makeup skills are. If you compare yourself to somebody who is doing it longer than you have, of course they're going to be more successful than you because they've been doing it for longer. But just know that every single makeup artist that has a successful business right now came from the exact same place as you are right now. I'm going to be going into eyeshadow next. I've wanted to try these for a really long time. This is the Kaja Bento boxes, little stackable container. And then each of them has a little eyeshadow. Like, oh my gosh, look at how pretty. I have literally not dipped into these yet, guys. And then this is the very bottom one. All of them are really purple slash mauve kind of toned and it's called Mauve Bouquet. Now I'm more of a fan of using concealer as opposed to actual eyeshadow primer. So I'm just going in with the Kylie Cosmetics concealer. It's the skin concealer. I recently looked on Ulta's website where I originally bought this from and I could not find it on there. So I don't even know if these concealers still exist anymore. Oh, that blends out really freaking nice. The most important thing to know when starting a business, whether it's a makeup artist business or anything else, you almost have to switch with your mentality around. A lot of people obviously are taught in school, especially, and also from your parents, that you kind of have to go in a progressional order, such as you're in high school, then you go to college, then you go into your profession afterwards. Like it's a progressional step that you have to take, but with makeup artistry especially, you kind of have to go in reverse. So you have to actually launch your business first and then go backwards and figure it out later. You really don't need like that many things to start out. And as you start learning things, then you adapt your procedures and your methods as you go. Everybody is so confused because they go, well, I don't have this in place. I don't have this in place. And I want to be perfect when I launch my business. And I'm like, literally just start. I do highly recommend you get some sort of professional training or maybe you shadow another makeup artist and then learn the correct, especially like hygiene procedures and the correct methods on like how to apply makeup on people. But since makeup artistry is so hands-on, if you don't practice on people, you're not going to get better. You can't just study it from afar and make sure it's perfect and then launch it. It's not really a career that you can prepare for in advance. I mean, it doesn't really matter how many people tell you stuff, how many videos you watch, especially like on my channel. And so they're just like, yeah, I'm going to wait for the right time to launch this. Now is the right time. I did make a whole entire video about how you build clients clientele and I will be linking that up here for you guys. But just note that a lot of procedures that I have in place right now, I literally did not do until I was about a year or two into my career. I had to do all the learning process first and then adapted my business based on what I've learned. Business is like really subjective to the person. It all depends how you want to run your business as an artist and there isn't a right or wrong way to do it. Say somebody wants to start as a makeup artist and they copy my exact makeup kit and they also copy my exact back end business things. It may still not work for them. What works for one person is not going to work for another person. And that's why it's hard to kind of maneuver this industry because it's not like a one size fits all. It's just all depending on who you are as a person, who you are as an artist and where you want your business to be. Next thing I want to go over is this really interesting thing. Um, this is the Wink Eyeliner Stamp. I've seen these before and I don't know if Kaja was the first one who came out with this. It comes with like two different things. So I have this Wink Eyeliner Pen and then I also have the Eyeliner Stamp. It's actually labeled left and then right up here. So you know like which eye is which and the stamp just looks like this. It's very, very interesting. I'm going to overthink this too much. Okay. I don't think I pressed that down hard enough, but also I think I'm going to like heavily F it up if I try to do it again. So I'm just going to go to the other one. <laughs> it's not the worst thing I've ever seen. It's definitely not as sharp as I'd like it to be though. Let me go ahead and go in with the actual eyeliner. This is just a felt tip liner pen. I don't know if the eyeliner stamp like actually worked itself, but um, I ended up getting my wings looking like somewhat decent, I think. I'm really impressed with this liner. 
Because I gotta say, as a hooded eye person, it's really important for liner to be super waterproof because otherwise, when I go like this and open my eyes all the way, sometimes if it's not waterproof, the liner like transfers up onto my lid and it's probably the most frustrating thing. So now I'm gonna go into this very interesting mascara. So this is called the Wink Lash Trio right here. So all these are magnetic and they come with three different like lashes and you just magnetize them all together. It's very interesting. So we have one that's volumizing, one that's a clear mascara, and then one that's lengthening. And I kind of want to use like a combination of all of them. So I'm going to use the clear one first. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with volumizing. Whoa, that is very volumizing. Look how chubby that is. And I don't have like a ton of lashes, so we may not even see a difference. They just like stick straight out and don't curl. Like you saw me use that curler beforehand, yeah. And then just for the hell of it, because I don't think this is making a difference. Again, if somebody has like normal lashes to begin with, it might help, and this is the lengthening side. So just a little bit thinner and also a silicone tip. This would be a good travel mascara though. Guys, there's not a mascara that I've honestly really thought do a difference with my lashes. I'm not even gonna lie. So that's why I'm gonna stick on really dramatic falsies. You guys always ask me what dramatic lashes I use in my videos and these are the Tati TL4 lashes. I'm just gonna stick glue on them here and then I'm gonna go on with my life here. So when you actually build a makeup kit, just note that you don't need every single color and every single finish of things like underneath the sun. And you don't also need a perfect kit to start out with either. You can use multitasking products so maybe use like a bronzer as a transitional eyeshadow color and then also like any cream products like if you just get like a cream foundation palette you can use that for anything you can use it for foundation concealer bronzer and this is also a way you don't have to invest a ton of money into your kit to begin with when you first start because I understand that makeup and kit building is probably the most expensive thing that you're probably going to invest your money in when you first begin and a bunch of people are just waiting until they get the absolute perfect kit to be able to launch their business if you overthink this and you get like way too many things for your kit. Keep in mind that you're not gonna have a ton of clients to be able to use up all of that makeup in time before it all expires. Think about that before you buy a whole bunch of stuff. Cause everybody's like, yeah, I gotta have like every single shade of foundation. I have to have every single shade of concealer. I have to have a matte one, a dewy one, a satin one. I'm like, no, like you just have to have three to four different foundation shades in each range. Get the lightest one, the darkest one, and a couple of them in between. I suggest also getting a yellow and a red foundation mixer. So then you can mix undertones. I would probably just buy one foundation that is a satin finished foundation. So if you need something that's more matte, you can add a mattifying primer underneath it and set everything really well with powder. Or for a dewy finish, you can prep it with a moisturizer and then also not set it as much over top. But everybody is over complicating things when they do foundations and concealers. Like you don't really need that many. And also it's a lot of weight to carry around. And also it's really impossible to go through a whole entire foundation bottle like in its shelf life. So if you have like 10 different foundations going on, you're not gonna realistically use up all of those foundations foundations. If you have maybe four foundations that you can mix in between to get different skin tones, then at least you'll use up those four faster than you would 10 bottles of foundation. And it's also not as costly. Just kind of find ways like that to manipulate the products that you have. And seriously, just be a makeup artist. Like use your color theory, use your knowledge to create a really versatile, but also more minimalistic makeup kit. Okay, next thing I'm going in with, this is the thing I've used for a really long time. It's from Merit Beauty. It's their foundation sticks. This is in the shade sand in case you guys are wondering kind of in between getting out of my summer color because obviously we are in fall now or transitioning that way i'm just going to use my damp sponge and go right in with it here okay this might be a little bit lighter than i thought it was i wanted to let you guys know that if you ever come to a situation where you've accidentally matched somebody to a foundation and it oxidizes a little bit maybe it turns like a little bit darker or maybe you accidentally match them and it's a little bit lighter than their skin tone you can always work in reverse. Like you don't have to take off the whole entire face of foundation and redo it because that'll waste a lot of time. What you want to do is if you go a little bit darker than the foundation, you want to use a concealer or something that is lighter than their foundation. And then also if you go a little bit lighter like I did, then what you can do is you can just go in with a little bit darker of a bronzer. But right now I'm going to stick on the lashes. See, lashes just pull together a look. 
Next, I'm gonna go in with bronzer. And so this is the Merit Beauty bronzer. This is actually a recent launch that they had with their brand and I am thoroughly blown away with it. It's basically a twist up cream bronzer stick. It looks like this and mine is in the shade Leo. It's actually kind of like cool tone and warm tone at the same time. Like it's very neutral, which I really like the undertone of it, but I've actually been using the stick for a little bit. As you can see, like I've used it and I've been loving this thing. Like literally all of the Merit Beauty ones I have tried so far, I've absolutely loved. But yeah, as you can see, like it's not too warm and not too cool. Like it's just the right undertone for an actual like contour stick. It glides on so freaking easy. I think my only like thing maybe is that it almost blends out like too easily to the point that if you blend it out too much, it kind of like starts disappearing on your skin. And then I'm gonna go right down my nose on the sides. I'm also gonna go a little bit around my lips to kind of like contour them out a little bit. I'm taking my sponge again and just starting to blend. It does blend out very nicely, but you can't like over blend it. So I would highly recommend just maybe building it up in layers. The other thing I did want to point out though, is that Merit Beauty does need to kind of like expand into the deeper skin tones. Like I have found that they don't really go like super dark with their products. And that's kind of the same thing that Hourglass has going on too. Even though I am sent product like this, like I I, I'm always going to give my honest opinion. I'm always going to want you guys to obviously trust me. And if I don't like something, I'm gonna say it. So if they don't want me to mention it, then I'm not gonna talk about it. Like they do so good at their products. So that's why it really pains me whenever they can't go darker. I mean, Leo is the second to deepest color in the bronzer range that they have. And it's pretty perfect for me. But I mean, obviously there is a lot of people out there that have a deeper skin tone than I do. And maybe their deepest contour stick is like significantly darker than this. I'm not really sure because obviously I don't have it. And I know they are a smaller brand, like I get that. So maybe they just don't have the resources to like expand quite yet. At the same time though, if I was a brand, I would wanna make sure that they're as inclusive as possible to everybody. That's pretty much how that looks though. But as you guys can tell though, I pretty much just was able to like even out my complexion now. So now the foundation doesn't look as light as it did because you can kind of go into the deeper bronzer to offset it a little bit. But overall, I do really love the blendability of it. If you go onto meritbeauty.com, this is where you can find all of these amazing products that I mentioned, such as the bronze balm. The bronze balm is a completely new product from Merit Beauty. It's a sheer buildable bronzer that delivers a wash of natural warmth and depth. In order to make this bronzer look as neutral as possible, they use microfine pigment powders to deposit warmth and also natural looking pigment at the same time. It delivers a light soft matte finish and it wears comfortably throughout the day without looking cakey or streaky. It also does have vitamin E inside of it, which conditions the skin to make it not look so dry. I inserted a chart right here that tells you how to find your shade really easily in the bronze balm. If you're already using the minimalist complexion perfection stick, which I was using earlier in the video, it matches you up with the bronzer that fits you best and you can choose from five different bronzer shades. The bronzer colors you can choose from is Quince, then there is Clay, then there also is Sen, then Leo, and this is the one that I picked up. And then lastly, we have Monarch. Merit Beauty has become one of my all-time favorite clean beauty brands, and it is completely vegan and cruelty-free. There is free shipping on orders over $40, and you also do get a free signature bag, which is literally the cutest corduroy bag that I've ever seen, and that ships free with your very first order. I'm placing my link right up on the screen, and then I'm also placing it in the description bar down below along with all the products that I mentioned. So if you guys would like to shop Merit Beauty, then definitely go ahead and click the link. All right, the next thing I'm gonna go into is concealer, and I'm just gonna put that right underneath my eyes because I really don't need coverage like any other place. The next thing I wanted to tell you guys, though, about kit building, though, is that when you guys are choosing products for your kit. Obviously, everybody wants to go the least expensive route as possible, but please do not compromise the quality for the cost of it, if that makes sense. And I'm not talking about, you know, going broke, basically trying to afford stuff from Sephora or something. You don't need to have like all luxury products when you first begin. So I would just do your research in terms of good quality products, but still being affordable. And yes, there is a middle ground. The Maybelline Fit Me foundations are absolutely fantastic. They photograph really well and they don't really have a high SPF in them, if any SPF. So it won't cause flashback. And then the LA Girl range is like by far the cheapest foundation range, but with the best quality. So you can definitely get really cost efficient products, but just avoid going to things like the Dollar Tree or something for makeup. Like that stuff is not good. So please do your research when you're building your kit. And I actually did make a video over things that I would put in a beginner makeup kit if I were to start all over again. So I'm gonna go ahead and link that up above for you guys just so you can check it out. It's a little bit older, but it still applies. And I still love all the products that I mentioned. With the having a perfect makeup kit situation, keep in mind that I didn't spend like $5,000 right off the bat on my makeup kit. I slowly grew it over 
over time. Buy a cost efficient, but also really effective makeup kit at first. And then as you get more clientele, you'll get more money. And then you can put all that money and invest it back into your makeup kit buy more high-end things for your kit. And then once you get a high-end kit, then you can start charging more for it. Again, work backwards. When you are first beginning as a makeup artist, it's very, very essential. Then next, I'm going to be setting my face with the Laura Mercier powder. And I know you guys are gonna come after me and be like, well, I thought you didn't like the Laura Mercier powder. Yeah, um, I didn't until I got a travel size version of one from Sephora and I've been trying it for probably the last like five months or so. Guys, I think I'm converted. I still like my Huda Beauty powders that I use in my makeup kit a little bit more, but I do definitely really like the Laura Mercier one. I love applying it with a damp sponge. I feel like using a damp sponge sets your makeup a little bit better. And as long as you're not baking, with it, it's not gonna look dry or heavy. So all I'm gonna do, instead of baking with it, I'm going in with a very minimal amount of powder. And this is what I do for my clients too. Just set right here underneath the eyes and then down the center of the face where you need it. And as you can tell, I'm not letting any powder sit there. I'm literally using the excess powder and just pressing it in until I can't see it. So that not only locks in your makeup, but it also doesn't make it super drying. And then if you have any creasing, because I always have this one eye right here that has like a crease underneath it, like permanently, and makeup always gets into it. Make sure you blend out all the creases first. That way you don't pack powder over top of your creases and like set the makeup in the creases. So then next I'm going into this blush because there is a blush now from Kaja Beauty that I wanted to try. Okay, so this twists up here. And then there's this heart stamp like this that you use to like put on the blush. It's one of these sponge blushes and it looks like a really pretty color too. It's kind of like a darker peachy kind of shade. Oh my gosh, this is so weird guys. I've never used anything like this. Okay, I don't know if I'm applying it like the way it should be applied. Oh, that's a really pretty color though. This is such a weird method of application. Oh my goodness. Oh, now I feel weird because now I'm gonna have to stick the dirty one like back in here. I feel like a lot of bacteria is gonna harbor in there. Um, I might have to clean that before I do anything with it, but I'm gonna use my regular sponge and just like tap it out. So for me personally, I probably would go for a maybe like deeper blush. For anybody who has like a lighter complexion than me, I think this is gonna look really, really pretty. Not like it doesn't look pretty. I'm really happy with the color. But to me though, if I like wanna put on blush, I'm probably gonna put on something that's a little bit deeper than this. For highlight, I'm going in with a Merit Beauty stick right here. This is in the shade Kava and it is just like a balm sort of stick. And actually I will go in with a sponge, swirl it around and guys, you're gonna die. Watch. I've been using this for a while and it's like the prettiest freaking highlighter I think I've ever seen. Now it's not meant to be like super long lasting and it has a more dewy appearance. Appearance, wow. <laughs> appearance, I noticed that it kind of does get oily if it's in a really hot climate. So I'm just gonna put that where I normally put highlighter. Okay, and then I'm just gonna finish up my lower lash line and go back in with the Kaja Bento boxes. And then I'll continue talking about this because um, I feel like I lost my train of thought. Okay, so the next question I always get asked from people is like how you grow your clientele and build your business. I covered this more in depth in my like building clientele and like how to get more clients video that I linked up earlier. But main point is you actually don't need to pay for very many things when you begin. And if anything, I wouldn't even pay for advertisement when you first start. I paid for a couple of different things when I first started out and they ended up costing me more money than I actually made. Instead, use your free resources. Like I would use Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, even YouTube. The more social media platforms you have, the more ways that people are going to find you. Not everybody consumes the same content on the same platform. So just be aware that the more platforms you're on, the more versatile your clientele base is going to be and the more people that are going to be exposed to you. And then also my clients can have more peace of mind when they find me on YouTube because they'll know how I work, how I am as a person. And then as you gain more experience, that's when you can start building a website, start paying for services like that. But even then you can also get free websites too. Like you don't have to really necessarily pay for a website. And I didn't get my square reader for a pretty long time. And even square readers are free. Like I think people think that you have to pay an annual fee to have square, like those little card readers that plug into your phone and you don't. They send you the readers completely for free, but you just have to pay a 3% processing fee whenever you charge credit cards. So you do have a fee that way, but you're not paying for anything up front, nor are you like paying anything to maintain it. Use your free resources. Like you, people just think that you have to pay for all these marketing things. And I've run Facebook, Instagram ads. I've also joined Thumbtack. I thought about joining Wedding Wire and the Knot at one point in time. And none of my things that I paid for ever panned out. Like I literally stopped them probably within like a couple of months because it was not worth it. It was just money that I was throwing away and not investing in anything. And it's 
totally bogus. Like I would not waste your money. The only thing I pay for as of now for advertising is Google ads because I feel like a lot of people just go on Google usually and are like Fort Wayne makeup artist or like makeup artist near me. And I want my name to be the first one that they show up with. And it has helped me somewhat, but I specifically just am running it just to like have extra money to spend for taxes. Cause like you have to spend so much per year to like offset what you make. So you're not paying like a shit ton in taxes. And that's honestly the main reason why I use it. It's kind of expensive and I just haven't gotten like a ton of people from it. So you can take it or leave it. Like it kind of just depends, but to be totally honest, like I wouldn't pay for anything. And then the only thing I have left is lips. And I'm really excited about this because I saw these on Trend Mood, I believe. These are the Love Swipe Lightweight Cushiony Lip Mousses. They're in the shape of hearts and they're the cutest things ever. This one is in the color Sweet softy this is the little applicator like look at how freaking cute that is okay i actually thought this would be more purple because of the packaging but on me it looks more of a like a peachy color oh my gosh wait oh guys it smells like candy it smells so delicious oh it smells kind of like laffy taffy like the um like the strawberry ones as i said it's a lip souffle so it doesn't go on like fully opaque i can tell if i took my fingers and just wiped it like it'd come completely off so it doesn't like stick to your lips or anything it's a very like lightweight kind of balm feeling but it's very hydrating at the same time though so I actually got done with my makeup before I finished my conversation with you guys. So I'm gonna finish up the Real Talk series now. And I basically just wanted to come back to like the first point that I mentioned in this whole video, which was not comparing yourself to other people. Everybody is in a different personal situation than you are. And I don't think that people realize. So. I've only been a makeup artist for about four years. This is my fourth year being on my own. My business started in 2019. And then obviously everybody in the world, including me, got delayed during 2020. And that was not the year to be a second year makeup artist. Like it was really hard for me to grow during that year. And I feel like I probably would have been a little bit more successful in that year hadn't happened. That's kind of, I think how everybody else in the world feels too, but it was just really bad timing. I was still able to get like five more weddings that year than I did the previous year. And I still did make more money. However, when you compare it to 2021 and what I made, then that was the real kicker because I was like, yeah, I probably could have been a lot more advanced in my career if that whole year of 2020 hadn't happened. In case you guys are wondering what I actually made in the last three years of being a makeup artist, I actually did make a whole entire video dedicated over what I made during those three years as being a beginner makeup artist. So if you guys wanna check that out, go ahead and click up above. It is not clickbait, by the way. I literally did tell you guys number figures of what I made. Like I did not withhold anything. So if you guys wanna be nosy, because I definitely probably would be too, go ahead and click that video and check it out. The other thing that people don't consider with this is what personal responsibilities that you have. A lot of people are wives, husbands, mothers, dads. So your career is only going to go as far as you can physically take it. And I want people to realize that. Kids take up a ton of time, guys. Depending on how old they are, if they're babies and newborns, you might have to watch after them like 24 seven. You're probably going to have maybe a little bit more downtime when they're sleeping to do makeup artistry stuff. But then as they get older and go into sports, you may not have enough evening times or weekend times. You might be traveling around for like traveling baseball or softball or whatever you're doing. And you may not have time for your makeup artistry career. It may have to be put on pause or you may just not be able to take as many clients because of your kids. And that's completely fine. And also if you have a bunch of family in your area, you might be going to family events all the time and that may take up weekends and you have to determine if spending time with your family or doing makeup artist jobs is more important to you on the weekends. Like you just have to prioritize things. It's hard, like it's definitely a hard call. I do personally think that I have been able to advance in my career as much as I have despite 2020 because I don't have hardly any family near me. I just have my mom that lives in the state of Indiana and then all the rest of them live over five hours away. So we don't really do family gatherings. And then also not having kids has freed up obviously a lot of my time too. I pretty much have like free reign to kind of do whatever I want with my business and can be very flexible in my lifestyle. So keep in mind that people that have more time like that will advance a little bit faster in their careers. And then the other thing that I have talked about in Real Talk series before that I don't really think is like fully sinking into people <laughs> brains yet. When we compare ourselves to other makeup artists, I want to say about 80% of those makeup artists, I promise you are face tuning or editing their photos in some capacity. You can go in with face tune very, very minorly and hardly have anybody notice. And then there's people of course that blur out the whole entire face of the person. And then you're like, yeah, obviously that's Photoshopped. And believe it or not, there is face tune video. Like you can face tune videos as well. If you edit your photos or your videos like that, 
it doesn't create a realistic expectation of what your clients are actually going to receive from your services, especially if it's very extreme. Like people have texture, people have pores naturally. Makeup is going to look like makeup on your face. It's not going to look like this smooth baby's butt canvas because it's not. And then those people are trying to figure out why their clients are upset about it because clients don't know about Photoshop the majority of the time and don't realize that people do that. And so then when they sit in your chair, they're expecting to look like all of your profile, which is 100% fake. I facetuned a video just to see how well it worked. Like I never posted it, but I had to try it just to see if it worked. And that's the scary part. Like it looks so realistic that it is very believable for people. A lot of outside people and also even other artists that don't know about this will probably think like, yes, this person's legit. This is how their makeup looks because obviously you can't fake a video you can. You can cover dark circles with it. You can cover blemishes. You can color even foundation that's mismatched incorrectly. Like it's insane actually what Facetune video can do, especially if you buy the pro version. And people, especially makeup artists, are comparing themselves to people that 100% edit all their photos and videos and they're making other artists feel bad because they're trying to figure out why the hell their makeup doesn't look like that. So we're comparing ourselves to artistry styles that that artist can't even do themselves. And it's wrong, like it's 100% wrong. Then also I wanna talk about really quickly the imposter syndrome I think that all of this go through. I've covered this in several different Real Talk series before, but I always like to cover this in case new people have come along and just are finding my channel. And this is why this exists. You have to fake that you're busy on social media 24 seven to maintain your image and then also get clients. Obviously, if a client sees that you're not doing very much and you're not active that much, why would they hire you? Like if nobody else wants to hire you, why would they? So a lot of makeup artists will make up content or try to post things as much as possible. So even when they are in their slower periods, they're still posting like they're busy and getting clients. You guys see me on YouTube, you see me on Instagram. I'm always booking weddings. I'm always posting about how I'm booking weddings. If you guys don't know, I actually work an office job two days a week. But when I work that office job, I will sometimes be taking Instagram stories and posting stuff when I'm working at my office job about makeup artistry stuff because I still wanna remain active on my stories. But that's the days that I'll do Q and A's and then I'll collect all the answers from those Q and A's and then answer those at night. During the week, I find filler content to seem like I'm actively doing things and to keep my Instagram profile active. But no, like I am not booked and busy throughout Monday through Thursday. People will not post like when they're not busy. And so that's why it looks like we all are busy because we're just posting whenever we're busy. <laughs> and to you, if you're not checking Instagram every single day to see that we're not posting about something that we're doing, then it probably looks like we are busy all the time, but we probably skipped a couple of days or we're using filler content to maintain our social profiles, but we're not actually doing any jobs that day. So my biggest thing is don't let social media fool you. We just can't compare ourselves to people that do not exist themselves. So that's pretty much what I wanna end with. If you guys do like these Real Talk series and also the Get Ready With Me style videos, let me know um, in the comments down below and also give it a big thumbs up if you guys really did like this video and stick all the way to the end. And if you guys also haven't subscribed to my channel, what are you doing? <laughs> Go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I do upload a ton of makeup artist related content, tips, vlogs, etc. So if you guys are interested in that sort of content, then definitely go ahead and subscribe to the channel. As always, I hope you guys are having an absolutely fantastic day and I will talk to you guys in my next video. All right, bye.